Das for inviting me after uh, uh, Rajivji's exposition. It's a tough call on me and I will try to bat as much as possible. It is almost like uh, after Virat Kohli, I have to bat. So, uh, I, when I was asked by Professor Das to come and participate, I was uh, very much uh, uh, thinking about this particular aspect because after spending a lot of years in education, I am of the firm opinion that our education system systematically doesn't develop half of the brain. Particularly the right half of the brain. Usually in the Montessori or the KG, you are allowed to do some creative work. And then it starts less in elementary education, less in secondary education. Then the coaching class is destroyed completely. And then you come to IIT and 100%. <laughs> so what I mean to say is that when I look at half of the brain, we don't use it. And to me, that is something which is truly, truly a tragedy of our education. Since an educationist, I will try to uh, contextualize this talk with respect to education. And after that, I have been working on this aspect of creativity. My entry into the creative culture became uh, active because of my engagement with computer graphics and computer design. Computer happens to be a tool. Ultimately, what you want to do with it is far more important, not the tools that you use. Actually. So I've been looking at different, different aspects, including there was one experiment in creativity saying that you got a name which was given to you by the parents. And let's say for the time being, we play a game where you have to come up with five names you want to give yourself, which will be different than what your parents gave the name. Sometimes you like it, sometimes you don't like it. So to me, there are hundreds and thousands of creativity exciters in our uh, around, but we never use it. If I ask you a question in the last 24 hours, what creative work you did, I am sure nani <laughs> So this is something which I feel very passionate about and uh, I would like to share some of my thoughts, particularly with this uh, contextualizing of the uh, creative industry and economy. I would not be an expert on mapping aspect, but obviously it will come up as we go along. By the way, usually you write your name and I wrote it as my initials, Sanjay Govind Dande, and I drop one character every time. So instead of three, two, and one. So my name, <laughs> the first one is my name actually. The second is a twist or the gin tag. Both of us are in some sense gin tag. And you may want to know what is gin tag. It's the generator of ideas, okay? Leader of thoughts and agent of change. So it is like at this age, which he mentioned, and I don't want to repeat it again. At this age, we are basically gin tag animals. So we would like to change, we would like to be the agents of change, we would like to give the thoughts to the society, and we would also like to generate the ideas. So ideas, thoughts, and change is very important, and that is what we are here for. So to begin with, I would like to mention that you, if you look at the history of the society, there are four segments of the economy. The first one is the agricultural economy, obviously. That is how the civilization started. The second one is the manufacturing sector, both military as well as the civil. And that the, the manufacturing sector came into being. And then the economy became agricultural and manufacturing. In the last 50 years, we also have got a predominantly large service sector, whether it is uh, banking, whether it is information technology, whether it is hotels, whether it is hospitals you will find that the services today form almost 60% of our economy. Manufacturing, which used to be about 40%, has gone down to 17%. Agricultural is about 20, 23%. And these are some of the things which concern us in terms of their slopes, which are either positive or negative. But the most important part, which I would like to call it as knowledge economy, but my friend Professor Das calls it as creative economy, but this particular aspect 
is right now not very large part of the economy as a whole. But in the years to come, in the decades to come, this is going to become far bigger, even in a country like India, uh, as an emerging economy. So to me, what we can do in terms of handling the onset, this is like a sunrise economy. Today it may be less than 5%, but it is definitely going to be almost 20% in the next couple of decades. And this is what I personally believe that will be the transformation and that you also alluded to it in a very extensive manner. Thanks to it. So, first thing is, uh, as, a, as a person <coughs> from technology university, uh, we need definitions of everything. Uh, once you say some word, it's how do you define it? <coughs> when, I, when he says mapping, I went to the Oxford Dictionary and started looking at it because I know mathematical functional mapping, which is not what we are talking about. So, sometimes the words also give different meanings to us, but creativity is the most important part that we are talking about. It is a phenomena whereby something new and something valuable is formed. The created item may be an intangible or a physical object. So the intangibility is very important. If I have got an idea and if I have patent that idea, that becomes an important object because even what is here or what are the ideas can make the world change. And therefore, it's very important for us that we create a society which is essentially a creative thinking society or what we call it as a design thinking people. Everybody cannot be an artist or everybody may not be an artist, but everybody should be a creative individual. That's very important in a society. The economy is based on the people's use of their creative imagination to increase the value of an idea. Now, once you have an idea, you will find that there is a certain value attached to it. And the value attached to an idea is very important. The ideas will convert into an object, and the object will be then useful if it has a value. And based on the value, you will find that the economic activity generates. When we say that there is a uh, just an idea, probably today it may not be very value added. But tomorrow it may be a value addition. And therefore, it's very important for us to look at the economic aspect of the idea comes only when we have a value attached to it. I would like to elaborate a little more later on. Uh, obviously, these are some of the important things that you also mentioned. Movies and television are the dominant sectors of the creative industry today. Electronic social media, which is rising in the last 10 years, has also created a big uh, industry. Uh, there are pitfalls. In the last one month, we are seeing what are the dangers of handling such uh, creative industries? Newspaper, magazines, and books, which is like the print media, and theater, dance, and puppetry. I would also like to add one more aspect, which I have not written over here, is the storytelling. I don't know how many of us understand that there is a value to storytelling. If you want to be a good teacher, and if you cannot tell <laughs> your idea in a story form, you are a useless teacher. I, I still can tell you. My teacher who was in uh, physics and uh, there was this convex lens and you have to map the object and the image. And in Marathi, the, and even in English, object is a masculine and image is a feminine. So he says, don't worry about that mathematical equation. This is all the infinity When you focal length, you know, twice the focal length, आगे रहता है ये फोकल लेंथ और ट्वाइस द फोकल लेंथ के बीच में वो लोग कुछ जम रहा है व्हेन ही कम्स एट ट्वाइस द फोकल लेंथ शी इज एक्जेक्टली एट ट्वाइस द फोकल लेंथ वो लोग मामला पिक हो गया एंड देन ही कम्स इनसाइड शी गोस बिहाइंड ट्वाइस द फोकल लेंथ एंड ही सेस कि थोड़ा बहुत तो अनुराग चलता रहता है एंड देन व्हेन ही कम्स एट द फोकल लेंथ शी इज एट इनफिनिटी सर एक दिन के हजार टुकड़े हो गए एंड देन ही कम्स लिटिल फर्दर you get a false image, and that is what is called as ki photo like a rote I never, nobody, none of us could mistake the positions of the object in the image, no matter what is the mathematical equation of the <laughs> So what I mean to say is, we've got to create interest around the storytelling. You know, puppetry is an extremely important uh, arts and crafts. 
which is very important in education. Since I am in the field of education, I would like to look at those crafts which directly help us in the field of education. If you give a lecture through the puppets, I am sure all your students will always remember what you have told. But very few people will think about it. I guess the rest of the four are very standard in the sense of product design, experience design, interaction design, communication design. So obviously these are very sunrise areas and because of the fact that there is a lot of interest in these areas, it's very important for us. So I want to give some examples. I mean, again, as I said, I like to give the stories rather than giving a lecture. It's very interesting. Once I was in the US and a person came to me, a very famous person, he gave me a card. And the card was saying, Mr. Kurz White, inventor. The profession is an inventor. I said, Ki, in India, if I write such a thing, they will say, Ki, Agra ja ke jara check up ja. <laughs> So how many of us will be proud to say that I am an inventor? And this fellow runs a company, he owns a company. And all that he does is that he creates the product and he creates a pattern and sells the pattern. That's it. He will not be in the game of uh, manufacturing it, but essentially very bright people, young, old. In fact, he hired a kid who was 10 years old. 10 years old or some such kid was an employee of his company. But the idea is that nothing is manufactured except ideas and products are created, patents are taken, and licensed to somebody. What I mean is that that is knowledge economy. That is the creative economy. Another example that I want to give is about a company called Saske. I don't know whether that company exists or not, but when I went and visited the company in Bangalore, and I said, what do you do? They said, we sell. And I said, what do you sell? They said, we sell algorithms. Now, how many of us can say that I make money, I make a living, I run a company based on selling algorithms? Now, today, Many, many people in communications industry at that time, you know, you will find this 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G. Now all these Gs are nothing but newer and newer algorithms of telecommunication. Now this aspect that I can generate, I can create an algorithm, own it, take a patent on that algorithm and sell it. That is where the world is going to be. That if you are good, if you are, and we are supposed to be very proud of being good in mathematics, do we have anybody who owns algorithms? That is where the creative industry will be or the knowledge industry. And then I had a company, very small company in the US where I was uh, consulting to them and I developed the software. They were working on manufacturing of the extruded screws, very complex geometry was involved. And since I created the software and the software was used by that company extensively, Somehow the business was such that they sold the company to a German company, very big German company. And the assets of the company, I thought they will put the land, machinery, buildings, etc. No, the first asset that was put there was the software that I created. And I said, whoa, I never understood that the software is the highest rated asset of the company. So what again I want to say to you is that that is what is the knowledge economy or the creation. You create the software tomorrow that can be patented and that can be created as a wealth in the society. There's a company, I'm sure many of you may be knowing, the most famous design company in the world today is this company called IDEO. And they have uh, at the IDEO University, you can even sign up on the internet with this university, you get a lot of information about it. Even the education system of a country called Ukador has been redesigned by IDEO company. So it's not simply that you make physical products. Basically, if you've got an idea, you can work on many, many aspects, whether you want to change the organization, whether you want to create a new society, whether you want to create a new product, whether you want to create a new artifact. The question is, do you have that design thinking personality? Do you have that mind? And creation of such people is what is the IDEO company does. Look at IDEO company, it's nothing but a creative uh, enterprise involved in knowledge economy or creating economy. 
Uh, this is another example which I encountered when I was very young, when I was teaching at the University of Florida in Gainesville. Uh, at 5 o'clock in the evening when the university will be closed, uh, we will all go home and at the intersection, a professor of chemistry will be always having a jar and he will give us the drink. You know? And as Indians, we will say, Mofat mein hai kya ya paise nahi? So, we used to drink, but every day you can't drink it. One day, two days, ten days, fifteen days are over, and still the fellow is still there. That was an energy booster drink, and that area is alligator infested area. So, everybody calls himself or herself as a gator. And therefore, the lemonade, as you have got lemon drink, is lemonade. Similarly, gator based, so he called that drink as gatorade. Today, Gatorade is manufactured by Coca-Cola company, distributed in 120 companies of the world. And for every box that is sold, that professor in chemistry picks up it. So you can imagine how knowledge can be economy, how creativity can create. Now that fellow was selling us free cost. Today I go to the uh, shop and I would pay some 30 rupees for Gatorade. So what I mean to say is that there is a certain value to knowledge, there is certain values to ideas, and there is a certain economy that gets generated by it. Recently, I came to know there is a Harish Verma, he is a professor of my colleague at IIT Kanpur, and he wrote one of the most famous, very popular book in college physics. In fact, if you are in 11th and 12th, those of you who are uh, the people who studied physics, 11th and 12th, H.C. Verma's book is very famous. Today, he gets a royalty of more than or equal to a crore per year. Is the royalty of his book. And he gives it to Prime Minister's relief fund, or he gives it to some uh, needy people. So he never takes a press out of it, and still uses his Priya scooter to go around the campus. So what I mean to say is that, again, the knowledge and the ideas can create values and can also generate an economy. Uh, uh, of course, you all know, I know when we were young, Shole became the hit film, and you know at that time, who were the heroes of the movies? The script writer, not the other character. The script writers became very famous. Even today, some of the successful movies in the film world, you will find that the credit, the maximum credit is now given to the script writer. So unless you have got a story, unless you have got a good script, unless you have got something original in your hand, you can't make a good movie, no matter who is the uh, actor and who are the directors, etc. And finally, I would like to say that even the paintings, paintings have become now a big business. A lot of people don't want to invest in gold, a lot of people don't want to invest in real estate, and they want to invest in paintings. And you will find that, uh, I remember this, uh, Raja Ravi Verma's paintings when I was a child. Obviously, they are very traditional paintings, but very famous paintings, and today the value of those paintings is very high. Again, the question is creativity and knowledge getting converted into a certain economy through value addition, is what I mean to say by these examples. So these examples will convince you that there is a knowledge or creative economy, whether you are a member of it or not, you have to decide. So uh, what I mean to say, there are four products essentially. These four products are very important. One is the patent, uh, second one is the copyrights, third one is the trademarks, and the fourth one is the logos. Whenever you create intellectual property, you want to capitalize it. And depending on what kind of intellectual property you have, you have to capitalize in the following forms. <laughs> Obviously, there are rules, processes, etc., etc., etc. I don't want to go ahead and get into the details. But suppose, for instance, I write a book or I write an article, I can copyright it. You know, you will find in the books, you open second or third page, you will find all the information about the book. Mm -hmm. If I design something, if I have a product in my hand, I can patent it. So, again, there is a patent office and you have to go around it and get the patent. Then, trademarks. There are a lot of trademarks you will find it. Whenever you find these uh, uh, four items, etc., there are trademarks. 
And then finally, the logos. The logos are also very important. The State Bank of India logo was very famous at one time. The students of IIT Bombay created it. Or the uh, faculty member from IIT Guwahati created that uh, Rupi logo. You know? Obviously, there are some people who think that it was a bad omen. If you write that way, you lose the money. So people nowadays don't write that way, actually. But that, there are logos that are important. So what happens is when I have an idea and when I create something out of it, there is a certain amount of production, there is a certain amount of distribution, and there is a certain amount of marketing. Now, again, once you create the idea, once you create the product, then the entire industry has to be built around it. So obviously somebody has to do the marketing, somebody has to do the production, and somebody has to do the distribution. Now this industrial aspect, like take the example of the book. I can write a very good book, but probably it will not sell that many copies, so you need marketing of the book, you need the production of the book, and you need the distribution of the book. Same thing is true for every creative product that you will have, whether it is a movie, whether it is a symphony, whether it is a product, a physical product, but you need these aspects. I won't go into the details of it, but definitely these are very important. This is the most difficult part. How to price a creative product? If I have built a car, I know how many kilograms of steel I have used, how much is the labor cost, how much is the material cost, how much is the electricity that I have used, etc., etc. So the costing a physical product is rather simple and straightforward. Costing the food products are also straightforward, but costing an idea is a very difficult task. Sometimes the value of the idea has to be evaluated and based on the value of it, again the estimate of it. And then you will find that the pricing is done. The pricing of an idea product is extremely difficult. And till today, we don't have a very clear uh, logic on it. But even now, you will find that this is a very important part. Namely, the, uh, and the risk factor is very high. Sometimes 500 movies are produced in Bollywood, and only maybe 20 will succeed, and the rest 480 will flop. So the risk factor of every idea is to be taken into account. As I mentioned earlier, the intellectual property rights of the creative products, as I said, it's not land, it's not machinery, it's not building, it's not material. But you have services, again, they cost, the costing of it is very straightforward. Intellectual property needs to be understood. Even students have to understand, faculty members to have to understand. In India, our culture is such that we don't understand the value of intellectual property. In fact, right from childhood, copying each other's assignment being the culture, what is intellectual property? <laughs> you have written the assignment, so obviously I will copy because you are my friend. Mm -hmm. So we always consider the value of intellectual property zero or share it. So we need to understand that defending intellectual property is far more complex. A lot of times you will find that the movie succeeds, there is always a court case and somebody comes saying that he made an idea chura li hai Whether it is a song or whether it is a movie. So defending intellectual property is also very important. Internationally this is a very big game. Intellectual property is far, far bigger. And now, as I said, this is a very important example. You look at your iPhone. The chip is manufactured in Taiwan. The electronics is manufactured in Malaysia. The casing is manufactured in Hong Kong. The assembly is done in China. And marketing is done in India. <laughs> but who makes the maximum profit? 70% of the profit is taken by California-based iPhone company. So today, the person who has an idea makes the maximum profit, not the person who manufactures. So manufacturing profits are dwindling. Ideation profits are increasing. And that is the message that we got to understand. I think we all know that the, the, if you just look at the evolution of Gutenberg Press, Gutenberg Press was a big, big development because before that, all the knowledge was either verbal or in the form of uh, leaves, etc. But Gutenberg Press created that we can mass produce knowledge, we can mass produce information, and therefore the Gutenberg Press became a big hit because books got printed. Similarly, the next evolution is the internet, where you will find information is now available plentifully. 
any time you want to do when my wife says that yeah, I have to solve, she's a mathematician uh, and therefore she has a mathematical problem, she will come to me. So the first thing I say, first Google Karo, then I will come It was quite a few times the solution of that problem or the proof of the theorem is available through Google. So what has happened today is that huge, huge amount of information is available on the tap, almost free. And this evolution is a very important part of our creative process. What are the problems in creative economy? The most important is the plagiarism. This is a very serious issue. I don't know how many of you uh, can appreciate, but uh, plagiarism is a problem not simply in terms of my ego or somebody's ego, but it also loses money because it has got huge amount of loss of revenue to the person who has created it or to the government or to the policy. There are four levels of plagiarism. I have mentioned copying of some sentences, copying of uh, some paragraphs, and they already pick up the paragraphs. And then the tables and data, or the entire document is taken and you write your own name as the author. And these are the different levels of plagiarism. We also don't have very good, uh, what you can call, uh, crime and punishment. Suppose you have done some plagiarism, what should be the punishment for it? There, there has to be a punishment. We don't have the levels of punishment versus the levels of plagiarism. We need to create a graded uh, matrix of this aspect, which also is a part of the. Uh, there are some softwares, you know. What is it? Turn it in. And that is the software. Now, what happens is compare the phrases to phrases, etc. And sometimes, even though you have no intentions of plagiarism, it will come up and say, no, you can't do it. So sometimes it overkills the issue and it needs to, it needs to be taken care of very properly. A lot of technological things are seen. This is something which is my business. I have written it over here. Computer graphics, computer graphics. Tools have changed. Tools have changed dramatically. And therefore you will find that technology is only providing you new tools. But the ideation and the creative spirit is still the same. I think what needs to be done is to have very more proper refined laws and regulation. Fortunately, sometimes not having a regulator is also very good for some industries because the industries flourish not having a regulator. But if the regulator is there, the regulator is supposed to help the industry, not really stifle the industry in some form. The future directions for the creative economy, uh, as I also feel as Rajiv mentioned that the future is definitely very bright and uh, besides those three sectors I mentioned, the fourth sector which is the creative or the knowledge economy is going to boom all over the world and particularly in the countries like India in the next 20 years. I do believe that the creative society, I, when you still say GDP and you go to Bhutan and they have got GHP or something, Gross Happiness Index. Similarly, I would like to say that what is the gross creative index of a society or a group of people? That is what is more important and that is what I feel is the future direction. That if you have got a high gross creative index of a society, the society will be very much economically, socially, in every sense it will have a certain amount of happiness. I do believe that there is a certain amount of culture Based on the culture, you create knowledge, and the knowledge gets converted into wealth. It could be social wealth, it could be cultural wealth, it could be economic wealth. But this pipeline of culture to creation of the knowledge or the creativity uh, creates the products, and then those things get converted into wealth. This pipeline has to happen. That will happen only when you have got the creative index of the society very high. I hope this particular event is the trigger that has been provided by Professor Das and the guidance of uh, Professor Sitya is too strongly get, uh, excited with the idea of the university because as I said, at least the right half of the brain will be developed in the university. Thank you. Thank you.